Hi everyone, Duena Boswell O'Shell here with the Boswell Law Firm. And with some weather that's moving into Houston right now, I thought that we would talk about custody and hurricanes or custody and just inclement weather or other disasters in general. And what do you do about visit visitation when disaster, disaster strikes? So with Laura looming on, on the coast and Houston going to be feeling some effects here soon. I thought I would just do a quick video and address this issue and hopefully provide some guidance. So, you know, in most cases, when you have a standard possession order, uh, exchanging on a Wednesday isn't going to happen. Um, obviously, you're going to have some Thursday night visitations that could occur. Sometimes that's a Wednesday night. Uh, we also have custom possession orders that are out there where there could actually be an exchange on Wednesday night. And obviously, you know, it looks like Laura is going to hit sometime on Wednesday evening, Thursday morning. Um, as it stands right now, we're not quite sure where it's going to hit, but it looks like somewhere between Louisiana and Texas border. But Houston will be feeling some effects. You know, I do know that Galveston has a mandatory evacuation in effect. And so we are going to see some effects. So what do you do in the case where you are supposed to exchange the child with the other parent and we have, you know, a hurricane or other inclement weather or other disaster that is occurring at the time and place of the exchange? So first of all, courts are always going to look to the safety of the child. You should never as a parent put your child in danger just to exchange at the time and place that a custody order says. Now, you're going to have to use some judgment on what that means and make sure that the, the circumstances that you're saying is dangerous and a person of reasonable intelligence would agree with you. Um, so you want to make sure that it's not just an excuse that you're using to try to keep the child with you for whatever reason. So what do you do? Obviously, don't take the child into any kind of dangerous situations. For instance, right now, if you had to exchange the child in, on Galveston Island, you would not want to do that. So first and foremost, the most important thing is communication with the other parent. You need to communicate. If you have the child and you are supposed to turn that child over to the other parent for a period of possession, you need to communicate with the other parent. Um, Obviously, if we have some sort of a national warning, that's going to help your situation in determining whether or not it's a dangerous situation to exchange the child. So communicate with the other party. One, can you pick another place that maybe isn't dangerous to, to do the exchange? Um, for instance, in a hurricane, obviously, if you can meet in another city or you, you guys communicate and you can evacuate to the same city, then obviously an exchange can occur to wherever you evacuate to. Um, so I would get a, in writing an agreement on how the exchange is going to occur and to follow that agreement. Another way is obviously obtain the agreement to exchange at a different on a different date. So if it's your third weekend and you're supposed to have your, your time with your child, Maybe you can exchange the fourth weekend if we have a hurricane hitting on the third weekend. Once again, get it in writing so there's no uh, disagreement later on what that agreement was between the two of you. And just make sure that everybody understands that you're going to be doing a fourth weekend instead of a third weekend or a second weekend instead of a first. Whatever makeup time that you guys decide on or alternative periods, that works. So obviously that is the number one way to do this sort of a um, change in custody due to some sort of disaster. And another thing you can do is if you know that you and the, the other parent don't get along, you can't talk, you're never going to agree on those kind of things, is you can always have either the order modified or to put in the order if you don't have one in place yet that you have these disaster plans in place in your order. 
That's always a possibility. It's not something that's usually standard in an order. So it's something to think about and to ask your attorney um, about putting those provisions in your order. Now, I will caution everybody that you don't want to use these techniques lightly. Um, also, if you truly believe that the other side won't agree, you don't have the provisions in your order for a disaster plan, um, what do you do if the other side is going to put the child in danger? If you are certain you have proof that the other parent will put the child in danger, you can get an emergency custody order from the court saying that you can retain possession of the child um, until you can get into court. They usually get you a court hearing very quickly. So that's something that can be done. Um, obviously, if we have hurricanes coming in, you don't want to wait till the last minute on that. So this is not an idea solution, but it is one that is available. Now, I want to caution you, when you don't listen to a court order, and you don't get a court order saying that you can withhold the child, you don't have an agreement of the other party, um, you could be facing some consequences if you don't honor the custody order agreement or the custody order that the court put in. One of those is obviously you can have an enforcement action that's filed against you. And anytime an enforcement action is the other is filed, the other side is asking for jail time, contempt of court, uh, fines. You have to pay the attorney fees for the other, the other party. If you're found to have violated the court order. Um, it's not too hard for the, you to find that if you withhold the child and you don't have an agreement in writing. Um, so you could be held in contempt of court and there could be jail time and fines associated with that. There's also a criminal penalty that could occur and that's um, Texas Penal Code Section 25.03, Interference with Child Custody. And that basically says that a person commits a crime if you take or retain a child that's under 18 years of age when you know that there's a court order and taking or keeping that child is in violation of that order and this includes temporary orders of a court so any court order that affects the possession and access of a child counts um, if you're in the middle of a uh, child custody and you remove the child from the jurisdiction of the court then you could commit, be found to have commit, committed a crime of interference with child custody. Um, also, if you definitely if you take him, take a child out of the United States, then you're going to get uh, the State Department involved and probably have a Hague Convention case filed in federal court against you. Uh, you also can't encourage a child to to leave with you um, for any reason. So knowing that those are some consequences that you could face for violating a court order, um, you need to think long and hard, see if you can get an agreement of the other party. Now, speaking to the, what we call the non-custodial parent or the non, the, the, not the primary parent, the parent that has the right to designate the residence or the sole managing conservator, if you are not the primary custodial parent, um, work with the other parent. When we're facing a hurricane like this, this is not about what's best for you, but what's best for your child. Work with the other parent. Stay in constant communication. Know where your child is. Know where they're evacuating to. Know the plans. Um, you want to stay in contact so that you can you know, get information on how your child is doing during the hurricane. Um, your child's also, if they're old enough, they're probably going to want to know how you're doing if you're not with them. So these are all things to, to really work towards and talk with the other parent about. Once again, this is not about you. This is not about the other parent. This is about what's best for your child. And that's what the courts are going to look to anytime that they decide anything is the best interest of the child. So if you're in a court battle and the court here's evidence that you didn't work with the other parent to um, provide for the safety of this child during a hurricane evacuation, 
that could go against you in court. So it's strongly urged. This is not about your time. Um, you can always get makeup time if you're not allowed possession. Um, and obviously, if, if you're trying to work with the other parent and they're not communicating with you and they just take off with your child, you will have an enforcement action that can be filed against them. Um, and they could be found to be in contempt of, contempt of court um, if they aren't communicating with you and getting your agreement. Please, please, please do not withhold your agreement just because you don't want to do what the other side wants. When we're talking about a situation where we have a storm coming in, a hurricane going to hit, and we have mandatory evacuations, you need to work together with the other parent and communicate. I cannot stress that enough. Um, after all, this isn't about us as parents. This is about us taking care of our children. And it's about the safety of our children and what's in the best interest of our children. Not about being possessive of how many weekends do you get with this child if that time with the child could put that child in danger. So I hope this clarifies a few things um, and encourages you to work together, communicate, and just do the right thing for your kids and everybody be safe when we're in this kind of a situation with a hurricane or other natural disaster. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to me at Duana, D-U-A-N-A, at BoswellTexasLaw.com. Or you can visit our website at www.BoswellTexasLaw.com. And we have chat features and a, a form to get in touch with us. Uh, you can also give us a call. Our main number is 832-919-6595. And we'll be happy to set you up with a free 15-minute uh, consultation and we can talk about these issues and any issues that you're having in your case and just stay safe out there and everybody take care of each other thanks for now